providing affordable capital to underserved populations has been around for a very long time. Uh, whether it was immigrant guilds in New York in the 1880s or African-American communities starting their first community development credit unions in the 30s uh, to lending circles, um, this concept of making sure that there's affordable capital for marginalized communities has been around a while. What's different and what's exciting about the CDFI uh, industry itself is it came out of, in the 1960s, systematic um, goals to address poverty through social impact uh, because the idea was to create social change within the capitalist framework, which is pretty exciting stuff. Uh, two significant things happened uh, with the CDFI industry, one in the 70s and one in the 90s. In the 70s, there was the CRA, or Community Reinvestment Act, that was passed into law. Uh, this law requires that the Federal Reserve and other federal banking regulators monitor financial institutions to meet the credit needs of communities um, that they do business with, including low and moderate income neighborhoods. Uh, which may not always have been the most lucrative places for banks to do business in, but the Reinvestment Act requires that they make sure there's investment in those communities. Uh, banks are rated on their CRA performance, and it's in their best interest to have a very high CRA rating. That law has helped foster a partnership between banks and organizations like CDFIs. Banks help us deliver our mission by making referrals to us, and we, in turn, help communities who are otherwise underserved. Then the other thing that happened to the industry was in the 90s, under the Clinton administration, a fund was developed, the CDFI fund. It is a federal government agency that both certifies CDFIs and also, through an annual basis, provides capital. So that's subsidized. So those two things really helped uh, create the industry and get it to further scale. Now there are over 1,200 certified CDFIs with over $140 billion invested nationally with a specific social impact focus. Um, so how do they work? We use uh, capital from banks, foundations, corporations, and government agencies, all of whom, given their models, have lower risk tolerances but who are glad to work with CDFIs to provide capital, again, to underserved communities. And most CDFIs balance this so-called risk of working with underserved communities through not just strong financial analysis, but through consulting services. So many CDFIs also provide technical assistance or consulting support. It's really the very human side of our work. We make sure we match individuals with our clients to make sure that they have information about not just uh, what they're getting the capital for, but how they should best spend it. Wow, all right. Um, there, are, <laughs> okay. there are four CDFI structures. Uh, there are nonprofit CDFIs, and the two organizations you're gonna hear from today are both nonprofit CDFIs. Um, and with nonprofit CDFIs, our pricing model is intentionally set up so that our clients don't have to pay full price for our services. The idea is that if you had to pay full price, you wouldn't be able to afford it given the stage in business that you are. Uh, so most of the times, our uh, organizations are subsidized. The capital is provided from other entities, uh, such as banks, including Bank of the West, who is a great investor in the CDFI space. All right. Okay. So that's who CDFIs are. The focus of CDFIs tend to be around key populations, specifically communities who have been underserved. People of color, low income or historically disinvested individuals, rural communities, and women. As I said, there are four major CDFI structures. I'm not gonna get into the detail of that, but every CDFI primarily focuses on the following impact areas. Community building, business or micro-businesses, jobs, and housing. And they're usually run not just by socially-minded individuals, but by financiers, former bankers, former entrepreneurs, current entrepreneurs, MBAs, uh, and so on, people who really understand how to manage money but are committed to building capital to serve good. Cool.
And you can see the way we do our work, our performance is, is really, really well. We are actually counter market. So in the Great Recession of 2008, CDFIs were actually able to step in and fill in uh, the gap that some of the traditional investors couldn't and some of the uh, traditional financiers couldn't. Our net charge-off rate is extremely low, uh, again, given the models that we participate in. So how can you find a CDFI? Um, you can find more about CDFIs. They're, the term is getting known, so do ask your bankers about it. Do ask your financial advisors about it. And if they don't know about it, please direct them to Opportunity Finance Network, or OFN. That's our national industry lead. It's where we receive uh, a lot of uh, the graphics you see today. And you'll also find a map to uh, find your local CDFI. You'll find there's a lot of concentration on the coasts in California. We're very fortunate to have many CDFIs. And again, today you're gonna hear from two of us who are focused specifically around business lending. Um, so again, www.ofn.org, Opportunity Finance Network, where you can find a lot more information about CDFIs. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope this was informative, and I'm looking forward to our panel discussion. Thank you, Sarah, for that background. So welcome. We are so excited to share the stage together and to have a chat and really bring awareness and answer some questions that we think you probably have in your mind. So we'll quickly go around. I'm, again, Monica Tamery. I lead the Women Entrepreneurs Program with Bank of the West and Sara Razavi. So I'm Sara Razavi, and that just doesn't get old how loud that is. <laughs> uh, my name is Sara Razavi. I'm the CEO of Working Solutions. We are a nonprofit certified CDFI. Our focus is providing, our mission is providing affordable capital customized one-to-one -one consulting services and community connections for the entrepreneurs we work with. Our niche is specifically focused on startup and early stage businesses. And we really do our work um, in five to $50,000 micro loan increments. We couple that with the one-to-one -one consulting services. Working solutions, uh, our goal actually is scale. We believe there are many entrepreneurs out there who need the capital that we can provide. Our risk tolerance is extremely high because of our mission focus. So we want to be out there doing more, uh, which is why we're very excited to be here today and for this partnership with Bank of the West um, to make sure that the idea of our services is spread and that you can really provide, that we can provide the support services for you. We are the first to believe in small businesses often. Uh, we are the first ones to invest in small business, specific business capital, uh, debt financing for your business. But our vision is that we won't be the last, that after spending time in our portfolio, you build up enough credit history because we start reporting to the credit bureaus right away. We report to uh, the three business, uh, excuse me, the two business credit bureaus as well as the three personal credit bureaus so that your credit is, uh, is really building while you're in our portfolio. And so that after your time in our portfolio, after some time in our portfolio, you can qualify for more credit options, including with traditional lenders and other CDFIs that provide larger capital, such as Pacific Community Ventures. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Adria Moss. I am the Associate Director of Lending at Pacific Community Ventures. Pacific Community Ventures is a nonprofit CDFI, um, 20 years old, located in Oakland. We were actually formed by two people in the VC world who realized that capital wasn't necessarily being provided to all those in the business world. So we started providing loans between $10,000 and $200,000 to small businesses. So we focus on growth stage capital, meaning that our business owners have been in operations around a year and are around 100,000 in revenue. We'll talk about this a little bit later. We're flexible with our guidelines, but that's kind of our sweet spot. We offer loans within the state of California, and then we also offer a free business advising program, and you don't have to be a part of our loan program to be a part of the business advising, and that's nationwide. It's an online platform where the business owners go on, say,
say what they're looking for, whether that's finance advice, HR advice, marketing advice, and then our network of advisors tell us what skills they have to offer. And they, um, we have over a thousand nationwide. It's for free. It's for pro bono. And on average, business owners who work, work with these advisors increase their revenues by 20%, hire employees faster than anybody in the nation. So we're really excited to be offering both of those services and excited to speak with you all today too. Thank you, Andrea. <clears throat> so if I'm a founder, how do I know if a CDI, CDFI is a right fit for me? Yeah. Um, well, interestingly, most often you wouldn't have heard of a CDFI. You guys are an exception, and those listening to us um, online uh, are hopefully an exception. And please spread the word, because that's really our biggest hurdle, is most people don't know about CDFIs. Most likely, you would come across uh, knowing about us by a referral. You have gone to your business banker, and unfortunately, uh, at the time, they couldn't provide you the capital you needed. Maybe you're pre-revenue. Maybe you're not profitable yet. Maybe you're too early in your business. Or maybe you just need the kind of capital that's um, not what they would afford, uh, would provide, uh, lower than what their standard um, capital, uh, uh, capital would be. Um, or you might have gone to a, an SBDC, a small business development center, or a nonprofit that provides some advising services. And you let them know that you're in need of capital but may not have uh, enough uh, credit history or you may not have enough for, uh, industry uh, history for traditional lenders. Those tend to be the ways people hear about CDFIs. They're not the only. Uh, what we're really excited about is word of mouth by service, that you get excited about the level of service you receive from our organizations, um, that you recognize, as Adria said, by some time in our portfolio and through the technical assistance services that we provide, um, that you really have access to a great opportunity uh, with us. And if the dollar amounts make sense, if the terms make sense to you, uh, that you really look into finding capital with us. Thank you, Sara. Adria. Yes, I would echo everything that Sarah says. And if you're an entrepreneur looking at your capital um, providers, a bank, a VC, those are options. And they might not be the best options, but a CDFI can fill that gap. So we don't, most of us don't have minimum credit score requirements. We don't always require taxes. We don't require two years in operations, which a lot of these hurdles you will find at other capital providers. So we're filling that gap in the market. And we're also, as Sara mentioned, we're very intentional with those who work, uh, that we work with. So oftentimes we're working with women. We are working with people of color. We're working almost exclusively with people who are located in and hiring from low to moderate income communities. So if that sounds like you, or if you're interested in other capital and talking, a CDFI is definitely a great option to explore. Thank you. So if I've determined that yes, a CDFI is the way that I wanna go, what would be the best way to work with a CDFI? Um, we ask at Working Solutions that you go to our website, workingsolutions.org, and look at our basic eligibility requirements. They are very, very basic eligibility requirements, and if you meet them, you will most likely qualify for some level of capital. What will work with you then is to see if you'd require more capital, and we'll verify that uh, through some information. But basically, if your business is in the nine Bay Area County, if you are 18 years or older, if you have at least one or more years of paid industry experience in the business that you're running or uh, planning to start, and that you're current on all your debts. Those are our basic requirements. And if you're a startup, we do ask that you have some secondary form of income, and we're flexible on what that means, and we can talk through exactly what that means. What we're really looking for is capacity to repay the capital, um, but making sure that we take, uh, we're the first to believe in what you're uh, positioning as an opportunity for your community and for yourself. So we ask that, again, you go to our website, um, check us out, and if you'd prefer, we're more than welcome to answer your questions by email, info at workingsolutions.org, or you can call us and we'll get back to you. Thank you.
briefly, Taya. Sure. So when I think about working with a CDFI, I think about how we are mission-driven and relationship builders. So when you come to us, we want to hear your story. So be prepared to tell us why you started your business, what are your dreams, what are your pain points, what are your opportunities. We want to know all of that, and we want to know that you believe in it too. So that's what I would say to start with the CDFI, know your story. I would also say do your homework and know your needs. I offer capital up to $200,000, which means some entrepreneurs will come to me and say, can I get $200,000? Um, and the answer is maybe, but tell me what you're looking for. If you need new equipment, how much is that going to cost? If you're hiring a new employee, what's their salary? We really want to know that you know your needs, and we don't want to overburden you with debt. We want to give you the debt that you need to grow. And then the last advice that I would have when working with a CDFI, because it is relationship-based, is to be honest and open with what um, the history that you've had as a business owner. If that means your credit isn't great, just let us know up front. If you're not yet profitable, don't tell us that you are. We're going to be running our due diligence, and if you tell us up front what we're working with, it really helps the process go easier. Excellent. So you've determined a CDFI might be the right fit. You now have some guidelines of how to work with them. What paperwork or what do I, what would a business owner need to prepare um, to get ready to work with a CDFI? So each CDFI is slightly different just as any financial institution would be, uh, but most will likely run your credit. And again, uh, it doesn't, we don't qualify on credit, but it gives us great information about your past uh, payment history and your capacity to repay. Um, again, you're not qualified based on your credit score. It just gives us a guideline. And for those who have either limited credit or have credit elsewhere outside of the United States, for Working Solutions, we also work with a great entity that gives us access to credit history internationally as well um, so that we can get your information. Because we do know so many entrepreneurs tend to come from immigrant communities um, who are building their story while uh, new to the country, and so they need that credit profile and can build that credit profile with us. Uh, and I echo what uh, Adria has said, you know, transparency. We will do our due diligence. We will qualify you. Um, but if you're looking for additional capital, we'll want some more information. Uh, so you will basically, uh, basically qualify for a certain amount based on just some numbers. But if you're looking for more capital, um, we will ask for verification. We will ask for more details. Our intent at Working Solutions is to be the first to believe and get you going. But if you want more, and in our service of other lenders, such as PCV and Bank of the West, we do want to make sure, you, make sure you're prepared for those kinds of questions later on down the line as well. Excellent. <clears throat> so what can I expect when I work with a CDFI? Yes, great question. Um, I think Working Solutions and PCV are similar in the processes. You can expect to have an introductory call, about 30 minutes with either ourselves or one of our team members, again, to get to know your business. It's based on relationships and getting to know each other, so we'll want to know about you. We'll then go into the due diligence items. On my side, I'll be looking for a profit and loss statement, a balance sheet, um, taxes if they're available, and we'll be pulling credit and obviously keeping you in the loop as we go to each next step. What's really great about the CDFI community, particularly within the Bay Area, if we come to a point where we don't think we're the best fit, we're going to lead you to the resource that we think will work best. There are accelerators in the Bay Area that offer business plan pre preparation. There are credit building facilities. There are lower, lower capital amounts that are available. So when you're working within this ecosystem, you can expect to get the resources that you need. So you talked about how the credit score can provide a guideline, but what does the decision-making process really look like, and what's the typical timeline for that? Again, varies by lender, um, but, but most of us, again, are looking at your credit score to get that guideline, and it will depend on your need. For working solutions, we could turn around based on our initial assessment within two, uh, up to four weeks from initial conversation to funding, and that's quite fast actually for the level of due diligence we're doing to make sure that you're ready for debt investments. Um, and 
again, depends on the amount, depends on what you're looking for, but we really try to make sure that our process is quick and painless, but it is informing your process for future debt investments and future investments. So you do have your papers in order. You do have a sense of not necessarily maybe yet a balance sheet, but certainly your cash flow and your profit and loss statement. Um, and through that, again, through a full transparency and through conversation, we try to turn that around as quickly as, as we can. A lot of the pace depends on uh, the entrepreneur's willingness to provide the ver verification uh, that we're looking for. And often those verifications will be bank statements and income, uh, income verification notes. Yes, very similar at Pacific Community Ventures to what Sara said about working solutions. Um, we run two types of analysis at PCV. The first is the financial analysis. So we're looking at debt service coverage, we're looking at net assets, we're looking at credit, those basic factors that you're all familiar with or will be very soon. And then we're also running our impact analysis, meaning um, who are you, who are your employees, what type of wages are you offering, are you adding to the community, or are you adding gentrification so that we can balance our portfolio with those that are um, safer financially but uh, and maybe less impact versus those that have very high impact with less uh, financial risk. So it's all about um, providing the documentation, providing it quickly, and our typical timeline with both of those ratios and the analysis is about three weeks. We have funded within 10 days, but again, as Sarah said, it depends on how quickly we can get the information. And you talked earlier about how you're the first to believe. So as a CDFI, how long do you stay with a business throughout their life cycle? So at Working Solutions, because of our target population specifically focused on startup and early stage businesses, and we define startup as anyone less than two years in business, often pre-revenue, and uh, definitely uh, not profitable yet. About 50% of our portfolio is less than two years in business, and 80% of our portfolio is less than five years in business. So our niche is that, is that space, and because of that, we stay with our borrowers for the life of their loan with us. Our terms are three and five years, so that means three and five years of consulting services, which if we were to monetize would probably um, uh, come about to $10,000 value. So you could come in for about a $5,000 loan, but walk away with $5,000 and another $10,000 in services if you're willing to access them. And those services will be systematically focused first and foremost on your financial acumen. Uh, do you understand what your numbers, the story that the numbers are telling about you? Because again, our hope is that we're the first to believe, but not the last, that you go on to additional capital and can quickly turn around your information to other lenders and other investors. Our first focus will be financial acumen. Then we go into other areas uh, of risk management, such as your HR needs, your sales and marketing, as well as um, just a lot of things that come up naturally for the very early stages of your business. I have been focused specifically on early stage, but we do also have a percentage of our portfolio who have been in business a very long time, but they may not have been formalized, meaning they've been very cash-based, and so this is their first foray into um, investments and specifically debt. Great. So, Adria, maybe you could give an example of a typical borrower. Yes, I love this question. Um, inspired by the entrepreneurs that we work with every day, but one of the borrowers that sticks out in my mind was this man who was born in Mexico. Um, his family was were coffee bean farmers, and then he moved to the U.S. to try to help his family in Mexico by roasting those beans. He didn't have credit because he was a recent immigrant. He didn't have the best cash flow because this was his first business, and he definitely didn't have two years in operations. So he came to us. He was working out of a shared facility to roast those coffee beans, and we helped him get his own space, a new roaster that can produce for Google and all of these other corporations, and he's helping provide for his family in Mexico as well. That's just one example. We do not um, work with only one industry. We work with services, we work with makers, we work with consultants, as well as restauranteurs and people who provide um, different services, but that's just one example that I love to share. Great. And Sarah, what is uh, a yes. typical example of a borrower from Working Solutions? 
Um, our typical borrowers tend to be, as I've said, less than two years in business, uh, often pre-revenue, and if there is revenue, tends to be less than 250000 um, Definitely not profitable yet, but our aim is that they will be. Um, and if they are not a sole prop, which the majority of our portfolio is, then they tend to uh, be very early in their hiring, so less than five employees. That's how they start with us, but many of our clients go on to growing their businesses um, upwards of 100 employees uh, through that initial first investment. Uh, we have uh, folks in our portfolio, we've served over 1,000 businesses over time, and uh, they range from similar to what Adria was saying. We are also industry agnostic. We've got makers, we've got uh, restauranteurs, et cetera. Um, one, some names that you may be familiar with, Brenda's Soul Food Kitchen, Outer Lands in, in, the, in uh, Outer Sunset, Taylor Stitch, uh, a men's design group, as well as Kika's Treats and 18 Rabbits, uh, granola makers. So really runs the gamut, and we're very proud of every single business that we've supported. Just because they started with us at a certain stage doesn't mean they stay in that stage. But we also, you know, if uh, folks want to remain a sole proprietor, if their uh, intent is not necessarily to grow and grow, that is also success to us. And success to us is also that this may not be, uh, the founder may not necessarily stay on with the business, uh, that you may move on, uh, but you have passed on your learnings to another entrepreneur who takes up the business or takes up a lot of learnings from the business and moves on. What's important to Working Solutions and to a lot of CDFIs is that there was community support that you have through your business really added value uh, to your community, including your family, and, and really been able to support learning and investment in your community. Wow. <laughs> With all of this support that both Working Solutions, PCV, the CDFI ecosystem provides, why don't founders know where, who CDFIs are, that they even exist? I know. I know. I didn't know CDFIs existed until I got into the industry six years ago. I literally bumped into our uh, founding CEO at a retirement party, someone else's retirement party. I was in my graduate program at uh, USF MBA program, and I was just going so excited about finance, about social impact. I was going to go do any kind of impact investing. How exciting is this? And she's like, well, you should come volunteer with us. What, is, what do you guys do? Oh, you're like Kiva, <laughs> you know, because a lot of folks know Kiva as a micro lender. So I thought, okay, Kiva, sure. But really what uh, CDFIs and social impact uh, lenders, mission-minded lenders, have been doing for a really long time, um, they've been doing the good work, they've been doing it with their heads down, kind of getting the work done. Uh, opportunities like this, partnerships with Bank of the West and large entities really support getting the word out. Because at the end of the day, as I mentioned in the introduction, we, most of CDFIs are nonprofits or otherwise um, really subsidize the cost of the work to their clients. So there's very, very little space for marketing. Very little space for marketing. A lot of it is word of mouth. We depend very much on larger entities, again, like our bank partners, SBDC, Small Business Development Centers, uh, the SBA, um, uh, the Small Business Assistance um, Center as well, to make sure that, uh, Small Business Administration, excuse me, that, to make sure that small business owners and entrepreneurs know about us. Um, so really, this, get the word out. Start asking, what's a CDFI? Uh, really, we've been most lucky by happenstance of people just finding us, but uh, the more intentional and the more community awareness that is, uh, I think the better for all. Absolutely. And Sara touched on this um, during the background that she provided on the industry. But Adria, maybe you can talk again about how can a founder find a CDFI? Sure. Um, yes, Sara did a great job earlier. And I think the easiest independent way to find a CDFI is to go on to OFN.org. That's Opportunity Finance Network. And they have a very easy database to search by the size of loan that you're looking for, where you're looking, the geographic area, and that's a great place to start. And also, once you enter the door of this ecosystem, it's very easy to find the right fit. So you talk to Sara and I because we're here with you today, or you reach out to us because you're watching the live stream, and then we connect you with the right resource. So we're all 
in this together. We're all mission driven, very um, personally related to the jobs that we do, and we're going to do our best to help you all. Awesome. And you know, Sara and Adria have both touched on it, but how are banks included in this mm -hmm. ecosystem? Yeah, so uh, for both of our entities, we are loan funds, so we are, we don't, we, we're not depository institutions ourselves. We lend out capital, but we don't keep your savings and your checkings. So oftentimes, banks who provide those services for you, and they also provide credits, uh, credit cards and lines of credit, are great referral partners with us and for us. Uh, so you might go to your banker, your uh, business banker, you might uh, open an account, uh, but for whatever reason, you wouldn't qualify most immediately for that capital. Uh, so then they make a referral to us. What's amazing about Bank of the West, especially for working solutions, is our partnership is, runs uh, the gamut and is, is really deep on three specific levels uh, that qualify within the CRA investment that I was talking about. Uh, for a bank to really service their CRA requirement, they need to participate in three ways. One is, are they getting lending capital out into the community? Are they themselves lending to the community at need, or are they working with a partner like a CDFI to get capital out into the community? The second is, are they making grants and investments into organizations that work with communities? And again, uh, for CDFIs, that would be subsidizing our work through grants. The third is uh, community service. Are they on boards? Do they volunteer their time? Uh, do they come and give workshops? What I'm really, really excited to uh, say about Bank of the West and our partnership is it's on all three levels. We have had board members on our, uh, in our organization. We have had, they've provided a very, very cool innovative program uh, called the Community Ambassador Program where they provided us uh, a pro bono one-year full-time uh, individual to work with us, and we're a small organization, so bringing that human capital for one year was amazing. Um, and then they also have provided uh, capital, over a million dollars in lending capital so that we can deploy that to the community and grant funds, which has started, uh, deepened our partnership and our participation in the Women Entrepreneurs Program um, and also part of their resource platform. We're very, very excited about this partnership. It's the kind of partnership that makes a lot of sense for us to do it on multiple levels to show support uh, because of the bank's investment in social impact. Thank you. And we're very proud to be partnering with Working Solutions and with Pacific Community Ventures. So if there is time, we may be able to take some questions. Sure, some mics will be walking around so everyone can hear. So, what is the typical cost of one of these loans, and what sort of uh, time time frame you know are, are you looking at for the term of the loan? Sure. Uh, for working solutions, we are um, again focused on the five to fifty thousand dollar range, and the terms are three and five years. Anything less than $10,000 will be three-year term. Anything above that will be five years. And our terms are between 9 to 11 percent, um, which, see, he said that's expensive money. And let me qualify that very quickly. Uh, it's expensive money when compared to um, opportunities that we hope you qualify for later on in your stage in business. Uh, what we are mostly competing with are credit cards at a rate of about 22 percent, because most of our clients are financing their uh, capital through either personal or business credit cards, which run a much higher rate. And remember, these are long-term loans, so your repayment is often less than $100 a month. For Pacific Community Ventures, again, $10,000 to $200,000, with terms between one and five years, and interest rates between 7% and 13%, depending on the size and the risk of the loan. Um, no prepayment penalties, and Sara mentioned credit cards are, are higher, and also not all, but some online lenders are, are quite egregious in their interest rates that you may not actually see in the terms, and so we've seen people come to us where I've had to refinance debt upwards of 50 to 100% interest, so 
yes, expensive compared to banks, but hopefully we'll get you to the bank after you work with us, but cheaper than a lot of other places. <laughs> Sure. I think, I think uh, just to. Yeah. So a couple of things you were asking, just to just to make sure um, before your mic was turned on. Your your first question was around um, our minimum credit score. What is the minimum credit requirement? At Working Solutions, we don't have a minimum credit requirement. What we're pulling your credit for is to understand your credit repayment history um, and the the accounts that you may have to give us a sense of your capacity to repay. So certainly we're going to ask about your other expenses, including rent. Five to fifty thousand dollars. So how far does that stretch? Yeah, a lot of the, I mean, the consideration, as you can appreciate, is around your capacity um, and the expenses you have in place, how much our, uh, our available capital will support you. Um, and a lot of times what we find, especially in high rent and high expense markets, is you may qualify for a certain amount initially, but by staying in our portfolio for um, at least six months of uh, on-time payment, we can come back and increase your uh, credit, uh, uh, your, your, uh, uh, provide you more capital at a later time so that that dollar can stretch. Thank you. Thank you. So you guys mentioned about the consumer electronics companies or so com the consumer companies, but uh, have you guys been uh, given loans to healthcare companies or life science? Because these uh, companies have a longer life cycle, uh, longer time to market. So it becomes very difficult to justify the revenue and like profit loss statement for this kind of thing. Because Absolutely. Like there are FDA, there are other regulations that you need to go through. Sure. Yeah. So how uh, do you deal with this? Yeah, I just want to make sure folks uh, heard the question. Is e different industries have different um, uh, time periods about uh, at which point profit profitability profitability actually hits. Uh, and so do we keep that in mind? Again, at Working Solutions, and I venture to say at uh, Pacific Community Ventures, profitability isn't the only factor. Uh, so we really do consider um, your industry needs specifically. Restaurants, for example, are another example of how long it takes to actually become profitable, the high risk factor. We do take all of that into account, uh, primarily because profitability isn't our only consideration. Um, and for those entities that you know, because the, the goal is that you have choices after your time with us. And let's suppose you finished the term and for whatever reason it's still not re yet ready for traditional uh, lending opportunities or higher lending. We will continue. We have many borrowers who continue to stay with us, multiple loans, uh, second time, third time, until they're ready to move on from our portfolio, and that's perfectly fine. No, I think that all of your points are great. And so... On a fundamental level, credit, profitability, 
um, net assets, they aren't the only factors that we work with. We weight things differently, and that can be related to industry, that can be related to time and business. So we're looking at a holistic picture as well as what you're adding to the community. So if we look at different factors, they're going to play out differently, and that's not the only thing that we're looking at. Yes, so at Pacific Community Ventures, we actually have a research and consulting arm, and they've developed a matrix for us that looks at 31 <laughs> different impact factors that we talk to every potential borrower about, whether um, the founder is a person of color, whether they're hiring people of color, um, women, gender, gender identifying, all of that, as well as we're talking about uh, whether the price of the product is adding value to a community, whether it's causing gentrification. So there's all of these different factors that go into it, and we're very explicit about making that a part of our process, and it's part of our underwriting matrix in addition to the um, typical financial factors. Yeah, and Networking Solutions, first of all, thank you for recognizing that. Uh, <laughs> that was pretty, pretty cool. I, I actually <laughs> honestly hadn't recognized it myself, so thank you for noting that. It is very cool, especially in the CDFI space. A lot of women-led and uh, women-owned uh, or women-led uh, organizations and uh, women-majority organizations, which is something I'm really proud of. Um, personally, at Working Solutions, we've made an effort to make sure that we have an extremely diverse staff that represents the community that we want to have impact in. Uh, we have majority uh, women-owned uh, financiers and lenders. We have majority communities of color, and every single uh, member actually is either bicultural or from an immigrant family. Uh, most of us were raised in immigrant, uh, com most of us were raised in small business families because we come from immigrant backgrounds. So. A lot of this is not just lip service, but really our lived identities and lived lives, and that's why we do this work. Hi. In regards to community development um, and impact, is there going to be a difference in consideration for companies that are focused on local community development as opposed to an international community development? Um, we're mainly focused on local at Working Solutions. Um, so, you know, a lot of it is around uh, making sure that the communities we are advocating for and supporting, uh, again, low to moderate income communities in the Bay Area are well represented. But we're not limited to that. If your company is serving international, um, so long, again, we're not basing our judgment on your impact. What we're basing our judgment on is that we're the first to believe in your business and uh, anticipate that the, given the populations we're working with, you are likely interested in impact yourself as well. Uh, the fact that the impact balances your financial statements is a really cool model uh, for Pacific Community Ventures. Uh, at Working Solutions, we're really just looking to be the first to believe in you and hope that from our uh, standpoint, afterwards, you'll carry on. Does that answer your question? Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Great. And I would just echo that for us, the process isn't different. We wouldn't look at you any differently than we would look at another business, whether or not you're selling internationally or locally. Um, we would evaluate you the same way. Hi. Um, I have a loan through working solutions. We were one of the first to believe in my business. So I've owned my business for 12 years, and I'm kind of at a stage where, where we're, you don't have a lot of access to capital. You've grown your business this far, and then the door kind of closes. I'm really curious, is are the loans through um, Pacific Community Ventures, is it a fixed rate as you go into the 100,000, 200,000? Mm -hmm. um, and, and then for Working Solutions, if you have multiple loans out there, are you still eligible to be able to reapply, reapply your loan once your loan is completed? Yeah. 
Sure. So at PCB, they are fixed rates um, between 7 and 13 percent, depending on the time and the risk of the loan. No prepayment penalties. And I would like to mention oftentimes, well, we should, one, we should talk after this, but a lot of the times because we work in the same ecosystem, a working, someone who's working with working solutions will come to us as the next step. So I hope the door is not closed on <laughs> businesses of your size, but rather we work as an ecosystem to get you to that, to that next capital stage. And as far as multiple loans, um, when first starting out, and particularly because of our startup focus, we do require that we be in uh, first position. Um, but as, an, as a business, especially spending time in our portfolio, knowing you, uh, we can make considerations and uh, accommodations to make sure, because we don't want to get in the way of additional capital for you. Uh, we know that 50000 can only go so far. Uh, so we want to make sure that you have a plan for repayment, but that and that's feasible for your business. Uh, so we'll work with you. Yeah. Hi. So my question is, um, what is the difference in if the straightforward business loan to the SME is this type of loan can be given to CD or buy, and then especially some some business plans. Um, if I understood the question correctly, and I might ask for clarification, uh, but I think you're asking, with debt financing, do we take any any equity? Do they do do we take any part of the business? Um, so through debt financing, it's really just repaying the loan. You will pay an interest. We take no stake in your business. Um, at Working Solutions, we don't even take collateral, actually, so we don't need anything to, to back up your information. What we do require is a personal guarantee. So if the business closes or if for whatever reason there are any hurdles, um, it will still be on the owner to repay. Um, I think that, did that get to your question? Sure. Eventually, some business like myself, I'm trying to buy eventually the property that I, that I want to buy. And, and the small business loan can eventually do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think you're speaking to use of capital, uh, the, use of, uh, the, the use of capital for the type of loan that you're getting. We're focused on small business loans, so they tend to be around working capital. Um, they tend to be around equipment uh, needs. But if you're looking to buy your, uh, a property, that tends to be real estate lending. That tends, there are SBA products for that. Um, and then one of them is a 504 uh, loan that uh, lets you own the, business, the building that you are running your business in. So I think the recommendation would be figuring out exactly what the use of your, uh, uh, the need is, and then often working with your business banker that's a first step. And if not a business banker going to an SBDC, Small Business Development Center, here are my needs. What type of loan should I get? Um, and, you know, again, small business loans tend to usually be around working capital, uh, startup costs, equipment, uh, et cetera. And then we have later stage needs such as I want to buy this building or I want to make a really large um, uh, investment in equipment and, and so on. I hope that got it, and if not, we're more than happy to talk offline. Yes, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Thank um, you. We're going to take one last question, and then um, the panelists will, will go to the back for additional one on one. Awesome. Uh, thank you for coming out and sharing this information today. Sarah, a minute ago, you started to allude to something I'm interested in is let's say, I mean, we want it to be successful, but suppose we have to default on a loan. It sounds like what we are saying is that it would actually go against my personal credit score. Um, when I founded my business, I set it up as a C corporation to protect my own social security number, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like these loans, uh, if I take them, I'm really not protected. So what's the deal? So we require a personal guarantee. 
Um, and that personal guarantee, you can get a, a guarantor for that if for any reason. Oftentimes, the owners provide their own personal guarantee. What we then report to our business, or both the business credit bureau as well as your personal credit. Um, so you're building your credit on both sides. Should the business go under bankruptcy, that's a whole other set of rules. And we abide by that, and you get credit reports based on that. So your um, business structure still continues to protect you. Uh, what's really, what we're really differentiating is instead of collateral, um, we're asking for a personal guarantee. And so we can talk offline a little bit more about that, but um, a, a lot of our businesses tend to be sole props. Um, not that that, anyway, I'm getting into a little bit more detail, but uh, the personal guarantee is in lieu of collateral instead. Where other businesses would require collateral, we require, and that is really as a lender, you need some form of guarantee that you're going to get paid back. As a CDFI, though, because we're so impact focused, the whole point is if you run into issues, we try to work with you around a business uh, a payment plan. Uh, you know, maybe we, uh, we re, uh, refinance your, uh, your loan to extend the term so that your payments are lower than what they originally started out as. Uh, again, for Working Solutions, because we're so focused on early stage and startup businesses and because we pair you one-to-one -one with a consultant, we hope you come to us pretty early on before that missed payment and say, you know what, I'm running a there's construction going on. I'm losing business because of that construction. A vendor hasn't paid me yet. A supplier hasn't come through yet. Whatever the reasons might be for the business cycle to go off kilter, we'll work with you to make sure that you're on a repayment plan. If and when, and we have a 4% uh, default rate, if and when that happens, uh, we want to make sure that depending on your communication with us, it doesn't affect your credit negatively, that we really make sure that the whole purpose of this venture was to be the first to believe in you so that you can carry on with your business. And if this venture didn't work, that you still have credit story and history for your next venture. I was going to echo what you said about really, we always try to work with the borrower where they're at. So that can mean six months of interest only payments, that can mean three months of no payments at all, and so that won't affect your credit if you come to us early. And as you saw in the statistics that Sarah shared earlier, our default rates run between 2% and 4% industry-wide. And so we are proactive in working with you and making sure that that doesn't happen. And that doesn't mean that the business survived. The success of an entrepreneur is not hinged only on the survivability of that business. If this venture fails, hopefully you have enough energy to start and continue another. If this venture succeeds, doesn't necessarily mean that the founder is going to carry on with it. Uh, you might decide that you know somebody else in your team actually is ready for that next phase. So success is really defined by the amount of knowledge you've gained and the amount of knowledge you've been able to impart. Well, thank you, everyone, and please join us in the back for additional questions. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you.